Hello friends, welcome to lecture 6.3 where we continue to discuss the properties of wigner willi distribution. So, I hope that you have already thoroughly uh, viewed lecture 6.2. The objective of this lecture is to examine the uh, other properties that we have not discussed in lecture 6.2, namely the global and local averages that is we want to know what conditional averages will give us and whether the duration and bandwidth and the mean time and frequency that I compute globally, do they yield the same ones as the signal in the spectrogram it, they did not, but does the wigner willi give me uh, nice results in that respect. We will also look at how discontinuities and impulse manifest in the wigner willi In particular, we will talk about the analytical versus analytic versus real representations and uh, talk about signal recovery. Towards the end, I have a very short video for you talking about interferences. With this lecture, we will actually conclude talking about the properties of wigner willi In the next lecture, we will ask how to deal with some of the properties that we do not like about wigner willi distribution. So, the global averages, it turns out, coincide with the ones that we compute from the signal. Why does this happen? Because the wigner willi satisfies the marginal properties. So, whether I calculate from the signal or whether I calculate from the wigner willi obviously they should yield the same thing. That is a very nice thing about the WED. And the proofs of this is fairly obvious. You can just walk through the integrals here. This is the def, uh, expression for computing the global time where you calculate the first moment of the joint energy density and use the marginality property of the wigner willi and you will recover the mean time that you recover from the signal itself. And likewise for mean frequency and duration and bandwidth. What this means is that unlike spectrogram, the duration product of the global duration and bandwidth is the same as that of the signal. So, WED does not make it worse than unlike what the spectrogram does. Remember, the spectrogram has a worse global property than the Fourier transform or the regular signal and its Fourier transform. So, that is the, it is a very nice property of the wigner willi The other interesting and beneficial or favorable property of the wigner willi is that the local frequency and the local mean time, local mean frequency and mean time correspond to the instantaneous frequency and the group delay respectively. This is beautiful. All I need to do is compute the local averages. For example, if I want to compute instantaneous frequency, I just locally compute the average frequency and that gets me the instantaneous frequency. Again, the proof is fairly obvious. This is the definition of the uh, local average frequency. We are standing at a time t and asking what is the average frequency, right. That is, uh, therefore, I need to use the conditional density and the conditional density is w of t of omega which is a joint density divided by its marginal. Marginal is 2 pi times x of t square. This 2 pi again appears because of the angular frequency. And then the first moment of the conditional density will give me the average frequency at that particular time t. And it turns out when you substitute for the x of t and x of omega whichever way you work with using the standard representations that we have been using the complex representations, you will end up with phi dot of t which is nothing but your instantaneous frequency. Likewise, for the local mean time remember the definition of group delay is the average time spent by a frequency component uh, or frequency of omega. So, uh, once again the same arguments here I have to locally evaluate the average time at a given frequency use the definition here the 2 pi does not appear and I end up with the group delay where I have c uh, dot of omega unlike, unlike of phi dot of t. That is it. So, contrast this with what we have in spectrogram to compute the instantaneous frequency I need to locally evaluate the maxima. E essentially I have to compute the ridges, but I do not have to now evaluate any maxima at all just need to compute locally the uh, averages. There is one major drawback nevertheless that the conditional spread local spread of 
let us say of the in frequency domain that is the local bandwidth unfortunately is negative for can be negative for wigner willi which is again a reflection of the no, no, lack of non negativity property so although wigner willi gives you very nice meaningful local averages the local bandwidths do not make any sense right anyway so let's move on and talk about the case of sinusoid corrupted with an impulse so we want to ask if i have this signal which is experiencing two extreme scales of times one which exists all over and one which exists only at a single time so these are the two extreme scales time scales that we are looking at then the wigner willi is shown which is shown here on the left bottom plot you have the wigner willi it shows this presence of discontinuity but there is a lot of ambiguity as well that is again due to the presence of interferences remember it does not have this finite nice finite support property as well as mainly the problem is that of interferences in contrast the scalogram nicely detects the discontinuity i have computed the scalogram in fact this is a normalized scalogram we'll talk about normalized scalograms later on using we have computed this using a morlet wavelet nicely picks the dis discontinuity which is present at this instant here however it has lost out on the frequency localization the energy of this sine wave in frequency domain is smeared heavily compared to that in the wigner willi so you should now expect what we may have to sacrifice when we want to improve the wigner willi in all of this at some point in time a question such as why am i studying wigner willi when it doesn't have this nice properties or very use important properties such as positivity or lack of interferences and why am i studying wigner willi well the idea is this you start with wigner willi and then you stipulate the requirements that you want then you may be able to derive energy densities that are satisfying your requirements for a given application which probably the scalogram or the spectrogram are unable to fulfill so it's not you should not be content with having only scalogram and spectrogram you should ideally be equipped to derive a joint energy density that suits a certain class of signals remember the scalogram suits one class of signals which is those signals where the high frequencies exist only for a short period of time and low frequencies persist for a long time but not always an application will produce or a process will produce signals with these characteristics then what do you do you can't use wigner willi the original one but you can then go and stipulate the requirements and start modifying the wigner willi to produce to arrive at a joint energy density that performs much better than either the spectrogram or the scalogram this is a very important point that you should remember and we will be able to stipulate the requirements by placing certain requirements on the way we perform smoothing or the modification of the wigner willi and we'll talk about it in the next uh, two lectures okay so let's proceed what happens when i have noise well the same story Uh, we should expect of course the energy joint energy density to be spread over the entire time frequency plane but visibly in the the uh, frequencies where the deterministic part is present here in this example i have a sine wave corrupting corrupted by noise the main deterministic signal is a sine wave of frequency 0.2 and i should expect maximum energy there with the energy of the noise spread all over the frequencies because noise is a broadband has a broadband uh, band energy density now i have set the threshold here to a 2% but if you lower the threshold for display then you will be able to see the entire spread of the energy density i am uh, what i say here on the top is that the wigner willi of a signal corrupted with noise shows the presence of noise at times even before and after the actual times of course the simulation is not really uh, simulating noise over a finite duration it's assuming that the noise exists forever uh, or as long as the signal exists but you should go and simulate another signal where you have noise only over a finite interval and you will be able to see that the wigner willi will show you as if the noise was present even before and after that's again because of the interferences and the lack of the strong finite support 
property. Okay. So, the basic message is again the Wigner wheel is not so good at handling noise, but in any case we, we are working with deterministic signals. There exists a definition of Wigner wheel for noisy signals where again the end result is that you will get the uh, densities in time and frequency and you will work with the autocovariance functions of the random signals and so on. Anyway, when we improve the Wigner wheel distribution, hopefully these properties are also going to get better. Let us look at this very important aspect of the use of Wigner Willi or the way we use Wigner Willi. Until now, you have been saying in all the codes that I have been using the analytic representations of the signals. Although we generate and simulate real, sig real valued signals, when we calculate the Wigner Willi distribution, we use the analytic version of this, of those real valued signals. Why is this necessary? Well, let us look at this example and understand why this is necessary. So, I have simulated a signal which has two Gaussian modulated waves separated by a zero activity region. When I just compute the Wigner Willi of this real valued signal, of course, in time frequency toolbox the atoms routine will give you analytic versions themselves. So, I have to deliberately take in uh, or consciously take the real part of that and compute the Wigner Willi, you can see that there are just too many unidentified flying objects here that is these interferences here all over the joint energy density. Ideally, I should have had only two regions of uh, joint energy density, two, two active regions in the joint energy density, but I have just too many. right? And why is this? Because number one, any real signal, even if I had only one Gaussian modulated wave and not the second one, the real valued signal can be written as a sum and addition of two complex value numbers. For example, if I had a sine wave for a short duration, sin theta is e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta by 2 j. The moment I have addition of signals, I will have interferences. So, even if I had a single wave here, single atom, even then I would see interferences. So, now for a single valued real finite duration real wave, I will have interferences and I have two such atoms and therefore, I have so many combinations of interferences. The moment I work with analytic versions, the interferences terms associated with the respective atoms will disappear and even the cross terms between the cross terms of the individual ones will disappear. In the end, I have only a single interference term appearing which is a lot, lot easier to get rid of. So, this should tell you why analytic representations are very important in Wigner Willi. There is also another reason which we will learn later on when we talk about the sampled version of Wigner Willi. Until now, we have been looking at theoretical Wigner Willi. When I look at the sampled version, then I will understand why the analytic representation is necessary. So, there are two reasons. One, because we want minimal number of interference terms, and secondly, I want to avoid so called aliasing when I compute the discrete time sample Wigner Willi, which we will talk about in the next lecture. So, let us quickly look at whether I can recover the signal because this is a question that we had also asked when I am using a time frequency analysis tool, if I want, if I can use it as a filtering tool. With respect to Wigner Willi, unfortunately you cannot, although there are some applications of using Wigner Willi for filtering, the main reason is that the phase of the signal is lost because you are computing this product. So, look at this. The first step in recovering the signal is to recover the local or the instantaneous autocorrelation by using an inverse Fourier transform. So, I first construct this product given Wigner Willi by applying an inverse Fourier transform and then I set tau equals t by 2 so that I have x of tau equals 1 over x star of 0 times the integral evaluated at tau equals t by 2. I have just rewritten this integral in terms of t, that is all. So, I am able to recover the signal fine, but there is this k that I do not know, which is the x star of 0. Unless I recover the signal, how would I know the value of the signal? So, this ambiguity will always exist. This is because I have lost the phase. You can nev never recover a signal uniquely given the autocovariance function. Does not matter Wigner will you or whatever it may be the case. It is like saying I give you the spectrum, can you recover the signal? Yes, but only up to a phase factor. 
because spectrum does not have the phase information. That is the main problem. But where phase is not really a requirement and or maybe phase randomization is all right, then you can use wigner willi for filtering a signal. So, there are certain applications in image analysis. I welcome uh, invite you to do a literature review and find out what those applications are. Right. Finally, we will close this lecture with a revisit of this concept of interference because it has been interfering in many of the properties uh, that are the useful properties that we want. And we have already seen this theoretically why this interference term occurs. This interference terminology that we use is only a mathematical one. There is no physical interference of any signal like we see in optics and so on. It is just a mathematical term. So, it is only an artifact of the technique. Now, the good news, so the bad news is interference. The good news is that the interference geometry is known. We know exactly where the interference occurs. So, recall this one of these slides where I have the interference occurring exactly midway in time and frequency. This is always the case, right. So, let me actually show you a video very quickly on that. But before I do that, also remember that the interference oscillate perpendicularly to the line joining the two points and with a frequency proportional to the distance between those two points. And you will understand what I mean when you look at the video. So, let me play this video for you, where I have the same kind of uh, signal, two atoms separated by a zero activity region. Let us see how the interference ge geometry changes when I move or shift one of the atoms. So, you saw what happened, right? Let us play it again. The interference term also moves exactly the, the midway location does not change in time or in frequency. All right. So, again this is just an animation to show you that the fact that interference term occurs at a particular location that is a midway is not a coincidence for a particular signal. It is true for all signals. We will make use of this property to get rid of interference. If I know exactly where it is interfering, it is a lot easier. But if it keeps changing with the signal, then only we have a problem. So, we will exploit this property to get rid of the interferences. In the next lecture, we will talk about this. In fact, we will talk about the sample wigner willi distribution uh, that is the one that we use practically. And then we will talk about the pseudo wigner willi where we will apply a window function. Right? The reason for applying a window function, we discussed very briefly. Uh, in the definition or in the first lecture on this topic. The Wigner really looks at the entire time horizon. Therefore, it does not really get me the local truly local property. Applying a window function will help in improving it, but we may lose out on the nice time frequency resolutions that we have. Then we will talk about how to enforce positivity connections between spectrogram and scalogram. All of this in the next lecture. Thank you.